Hi. Well, this video I thought we'd take a look at a wireless 19 set that I had. Uh, this is a Mark II. Uh, the wireless 19 set was a Len Lease production radio for the UK and Russia. You can find it in World War II tanks and vehicles. It's uh, basically a, two radios into one. There's an HF section on this side that covers 40 and 80 meters and then on the left side over here uh, there's a VHF section uh, I think it's in the 230 235 megahertz range so this particular Mark II uh, was a uh, was a find it was in sad shape um, basically I, I looked at it for parts it was that bad it is looked like it sat in a uh, barn or something the water had leaked on the top on the variometer all the paint was rusted off uh, had wire sticking out of the front obviously it had been hacked up a lot of empty holes so it was in pretty sad shape but when I picked it up I noticed it was unusually heavy so uh, my curiosity got to me when I brought it home I took it apart and found out the reason why it was so heavy was that somebody had uh, gutted out the VHS section and installed all the contents of the dynamotor into the VHS section. So um, initially I was pretty much repulsed because as a purist, you know, I like to see them as they came out of the factory. But it is what it is. The HF section looked uh, untouched and uh, uh, looked pretty good shape. Uh, so, uh, so I cleaned up most of the mess of the wiring and all the nonsense that I have no idea what the other owner was trying to prove there. Like I say, there were wires coming out of the front, extra holes, and it was just a mess. Cleaned it out the best I could. I had it completely stripped the variometer, re rebuilt that, repainted it, the top. Uh, started filling in some of the holes over here where there was all the VHF section was missing. Uh, yeah, I added a fuse into one side, uh, speaker connection into the other. There was holes in the top already, and so I fitted that uh, speaker on the top and the existing holes that the other person had put in there. So I'd have an external speaker. Uh, I had a microphone plug, a four pin, and I just happened to have a handset that fit in there nicely. And it actually seemed wired to it already. So that was kind of a bonus. And after a little tweaking, I actually got it fired up and um, kind of set the thing up to uh, appear as original as possible and yet still function with the uh, existing butchery that was done to it. So what we've got here is this switch now is the filament switch and uh, gets uh, filament voltage, lights the tubes up and then this other switch here will now throw the, in the internal dynamotor on and as you can hear, comes up to speed pretty quick. I hear a uh, QSO on oh. 7285 Tim. Well, actually, so I think we can here. I have to that's 40 meters AM, and uh, I think he just said it's 7285, so, uh, so it seems to be dialed in pretty good. Probably hang in here. Go ahead. And uh, there we have it. So basically, it took with what I had to, had and made it into something that's still usable and saved another piece from the scrap heap, and it seems to function pretty good. Uh, the ability here to turn the speaker off, which then enables you to listen to the handset, and push the transmit. You can hear the dynamotor load down. I'm hoping I'm not interfering those guys, but with 7 or 8 watts, I doubt they're hearing me. And there we have a functioning wireless 19 set in a butchered state. So, there's plenty of other information on the net if you want to know more about wireless 19s in more detail. Uh, they're neat little sets, and uh, actually been enjoying this one in the compact version uh, as it sits here.